Hey folks, uh, Mr. Mathlog here. This lesson is a fast one, I think. It's called ratio. So um, our essential question here is how do we uh, use ratios to compare quantities? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. A ratio, you guys, is a comparison of two quantities. It shows uh, how many times as great one quantity is uh, than another. So we use ratios all the time. Uh, in our lives all the time. So for example here, the ratio of squares up here to triangles is three to one. So for every three squares, there's one triangle right there. Okay, so we're gonna use that ratio to discuss something. So uh, write the ratio of triangles to squares. Okay, so the ratios of triangles to squares, there's one triangle for every three squares. So instead of it being three to one, it's gonna be one to three, okay? Write the ratio of triangles to all figures, okay? So for every triangle, there's four figures all together. So every triangle means there's gonna be four figures, so one to four. If the pattern has two triangles, how many squares does it have, okay? So, so for one triangle, we get three squares. That means if we double that for two triangles, we're gonna get double that, so there's gonna be six squares. So uh, we'll have six squares. If that pattern, uh, if the pattern has nine squares, how many triangles does it have and how do we know that? Okay, so for every three squares, there's going to be a triangle. So if there's going to be nine squares, there's, uh, that means there's three sets of uh, three triangles. That, I mean, three sets of three squares, that means we're going to get um, uh, three triangles. So every nine squares equals uh, uh, well, nine squares is equal to three groups of three, and since there is one triangle for every group of three squares, the pattern's going to have three triangles because there's there's um, nine squares in there. I hope that makes sense, okay? So uh, write a rule that we can use to find the number of squares that are in the pattern when we know the number of triangles that there are, okay? So then write a rule that we can use to find the number of triangles when we know the number of squares. Okay, well that's easy, you guys. So to find the number of squares, we just multiply the triangles by three. Okay, so if they give us, say they gave us five triangles, and that means there's gonna be 15 squares right there. And to find the number of triangles, we divide the number of squares by three. So let's say we had 21 squares, and that means divided by three, there'd be seven triangles right there, okay? So there's a rule right there. Write a rule, I'm a number two now. Write a rule that we can use to find the total number of figures in the pattern when we know the number of triangles. Okay, remember, for every triangle, there's four figures in the, in the figure right there. So we just multiply that number of triangles by four. Okay, all right, so writing ratios, you guys. The number and the ratios are called the term. So suppose that a class, there are five boys for every three girls, and the ratio of boys to girls is five to three. And the terms are five and three, and the ratio can also be written as follows, okay? We can write it as five to three, or five boys to three girls, or five to three, just like we see it right there. We can also write it like this, you guys, uh, with a, a colon in between them. This says five to three, okay? One more way we can do it is a fraction. We've been writing fractions all along. Fractions are just a form of a ratio. So five boys to three girls right there, okay? All right, so a ratio uh, can compare a part to a part, or a part to a whole, or a whole to a part right there. And what does that mean? I'll show you in, in here. Okay, so here we have Mr. B's book collection right here. And oh boy, this is my kind of guy right here. So Mr. B uh, has geometry books, eight of them. He has, uh, this is his, uh, he has three algebra books. He has two integrated math books. And so that's the new series in high school is called integrated math. And he has one calculus book. So uh, write uh, the ratio of geometry to algebra in three different ways. Okay, so Geometry is eight, algebra is three right there. So um, uh, this is part to part, you guys, because the whole would be we'd add them all up for the whole. So that's why this is part to part. So geometry would be uh, eight to three. You can write it like this as a fraction, eight over three, okay? Don't write it as three over eight because that would be algebra to geometry. We are writing this as the ratio of geometry to algebra, okay? So this has to be eight first and three second because geometry is first and algebra is second. So eight has to go on top and three has to go on bottom because geometry is first and algebra is second right here, okay? And then another way is we can just write it in words, eight geometry to three algebra. All right, so here we're gonna write the ratio of 
algebra books to total books in three different ways, okay? So this one's going to be part to whole because the whole is the total right there. So the total, you guys, is add them all up. There's 14 right here, okay? So algebra is there's three algebra to the total of 14 right here. So we can write it as 3 colon 14. This says 3 to 14. Okay, we can write it as a fraction, 3 over 14, and we can write it in words, 3 algebra books to 14 total books right there. All right, so uh, what is the ratio of books that are algebra books that uh, to the ratio that are not algebra books? And is this part to part or part to whole? Okay, well, algebra books are, there's 3 algebra books, and since there's 14 total, that means there's 11 that are not algebra books. And this one's a part to part, you guys, so 3 to 11. The whole would be all of them all together. So, so we'd uh, here's uh, the ratio of algebra books to books that are not algebra, three to eleven, right there, and that's part to part. Okay. So write and interpret the ratio of integrated math books to algebra books. Okay. So integrated math books, there's two of them. There's three algebra books right there. So interpret that. So you can write it as any of uh, two to three or with a colon right here, or you can write the word two in there, two, two, three. Okay, or as a fraction, two to three. Or you can say two IMs means integrated math. Two integrated math to three algebra books. And so interpreting that means there are two integrated math books for every three algebra books. Okay, so the ratio of students to teachers is 20 to 1. Does the school have more students or teachers? And how do we know? Okay, well, students to teachers, that means the first one is students. That means that's going to be the first number here, 20 right here. So there's more students in there right there. So students uh, uh, have, the, have more there, and, and there's 20 students for every teacher right there. Well, that would be nice. My classes are usually 36 students to 1. So GORP, you guys, you guys ever heard of GORP? GORP is a trail mix uh, that's often used for hikers that hike in the mountains, and it stands for good old uh, raisins and peanuts. So there's all kinds of mixtures of GORP right here. Here's one mixture of GORP. So three cups of raisins, three cups of nuts, one cup of granola, and one cup of oats. Okay, so write a ratio in three different forms. Okay, so nuts to oats. Okay, so nuts is gonna, nuts is gonna be three to one right here. So you can write it in all three of these ways. With the colon right here, you can write it with the word two or as a fraction, or you can even say, three nuts, uh, three cups of nuts to every one cup of oats. You can say it in words, okay? Total mixture, you guys, total mixture is three plus three plus one plus one, which is eight, and that has to come first because total mix is first to raisins, and there's three cups of raisins, so eight with a colon three, eight to three, or eight over three. Okay, granola to oats, okay? So this is one to one right there, so you can write it in all three of those ways right there. Okay, equivalent ratios, you guys. Equivalent ratios are ratios that have the same comparison. And uh, we can find, there should be a C right there. We can find, can put a C right there, can find equivalent ratios by multiplying or dividing both terms of the ratio by the same number. i got to put that C in here, so let me put that C right there. Okay, sorry, I, I send these to all my teachers here. So, for example, 2 sevenths is an equivalent ratio to 4 fourteenths because we took 2 sevenths and we multiplied both the top and the bottom by, I'm going to forget about that uh, C right there, by 2 over 2. Okay, so we get 14 over 4. Okay, so also 8 over 24 is an equivalent ratio to 2 over 6 because we divided both the top and bottom by 4 right there. So 8 divided by 4 equals 2, 24 divided by 4 equals 6. We can even make reduce it even more and divide it by 2 over 2. But, but anyways, 8 over 24 is an equivalent ratio to 2 over 6. So a ratio with terms that have no common factors is said to be in simplest form, okay? Like 2 sevenths is in simplest form right here. 2 sixths is not because that can reduce even more to th uh, 1 third. All right, so we can make uh, raspberry lemonade by mixing three cups of lemonade with two cups of raspberry juice. I love raspberry lemonade. So how much lemonade and how much raspberry juice do we need to make four times the original recipe? Okay, there's a couple of ways, you guys. One way is we can make a table. So make a table comparing the number of lemonade and raspberry juice needed to make 
two times, then three times, then four times the original recipe, okay? So here's a table right here. So um, uh, we got lemonade, so three cups to every two cups raspberry juice right there. So we're going to take uh, the lemonade and go times two. So that means we multiply this times two, and then times three, and then times three, and times four, and times four. Okay, let's slide that up right there. All right, so here we go. We're going to multiply three times two and two times two. So there it is doubled right there. Here it is tripled. We're going to do three three times three and two times three. Well, three times three is nine, two times three is six. Three times four is 12, and then um, two times four is eight. So let's answer the question. So the last column of the table shows the number of cups of lemonade versus the number of cups of um, uh, raspberry right there. So we need 12 cups of lemonade and eight cups of raspberry juice. The second way is better, I think, you guys. Since we need uh, four times, then we multiply uh, the top and bottom by this number right here, four right here. So write the, um, uh, the original ratio as a fraction, three to two right there, and then we just multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. In this case, we're going to multiply it by four because we want to know four times. So here it is, times four right there. We get 12 over eight. So that tells us right there to make four times the original recipe, we need 12 cups of lemonade and eight cups of raspberry juice. Just remember, the lemonade was on top. So this top number is going to be our lemonade right there. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.